Okay, so this is sort of along the same line. So if you could isolate what your biggest challenge has been so far in transferring to the four-year environment. Is that what you want to say? For me, it was along a different dynamic. Uh, for me, it was kind of networking. And so at Middlesex, again, it kind of being a commuter college, you don't get the same on-campus experience as living on campus. And I know that it's, it's hard to compare the two, but you know, just speaking from my experience, networking with other students, with faculty, with staff, with you know, people in the community, that's something I did not get to do at Middlesex. I don't think to the extent that I did at uh, Clark University. And I don't, I don't know if that's perhaps on my end that I didn't get as involved as I could, or perhaps in you know, different kinds of groups. And so maybe I just didn't have the opportunities because I you know, wasn't involved in that way. Uh, but with other students especially, and again, it's hard to differentiate or to, to compare between, you know, living on school and then not. But I felt as though that was something that I did not really have that strong of a grasp of, uh, perhaps. Can I, can I just ask you, does, yeah. does Clark encourage this or is that the culture or combination? I think both actually. So Clark is known for having a lot of student-run organizations, a lot of student clubs, mm -hmm. and I'm involved in quite a number of them, and I, I quickly learned that students like to learn about one another, and that if they need someone for a position or for you know help with a project or something, they'll gladly reach out to someone who's not even in the class. So that kind of networking, kind of having a student base on which you can rely or you know speak to and with, and I did not feel that as strongly here at <coughs> and also partly the faculty, but again, I don't know if that was just because of the organizations that I joined. Can you repeat the question? Okay. Oh, sure. Yes. Um, so what, what, what would you say has been your biggest challenge in transferring? I honestly cannot think of one I've had. I've, I actually had the, a long run transition, and I was fortunate enough to have that, but I can't, I looked at the list of, of questions and I'm thinking, this is probably the only question I don't have a great answer to. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I, I haven't had yet, not going to have a, a tough challenge huh? aside from the course load, but I mean, that, that was expected, but mm -hmm. I haven't had any transitioning challenges at all. Okay. Um, I would definitely agree with, to the prior question. We'd definitely be learning the new study skills and methods, you know, to achieve a better <coughs> balance between exams, homework, and coursework, and all that. Because even at UMass, it's just the same, you know. I come from Middlesex, but you can, last day you can cram it. I'm not that type of student to cram, but you can cram all your knowledge in one day if given to me. But at UMass, <coughs> you have to study weeks and weeks ahead. And if you're lucky, you know, you'll remember everything just fine. Um, but <coughs> besides that, I would honestly say another challenge was also adjusting to the financial aspect from Middlesex to UMass. Because... <coughs> well, with Middlesex, it's very more broad, I guess you can say, understanding where your bill is at, you know, your scholarships, your student loans and everything. With that, with UMass Lowell, you know, you have ISIS, this hub world, this <laughs> own thing that you have to understand. <laughs> and it doesn't always work. It does, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, there's policies and stuff that you have to know. I wasn't informed until one student told me, you know, in one of my class, my social anthropology class, you know, you have to have at least a thousand dollars or less in your student account or else you'll not be able to register for the next semester. So by <laughs> the end of that semester, you know, I get an email from the social, uh, solution center saying your invoice is $1,518 and 65 cents. I remember exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I had, you know, a surplus amount. So I had to pay an extra $500 out of my own pocket not from my scholarships, not from my student loans or anything, because you can only have a certain amount in your student loans depending on each year, which year you're in. So I think uh, the one that was a huge challenge was adjusting to the financial changes because they're so specific at UMass Lowell that it kind of put stress on me, you know, that not only am I worrying about my coursework, but then I also have to make sure that my balance and everything is perfectly fine and understanding where I'm at financially mm -hmm. and henceforth because I can't spend too much money you know, on my own free time, whereas I have to spend money on UMass Lowell so I can be able to register for the next classes. Um, I think uh, my biggest challenge um, so far is, I mean, this is my first semester in Tufts. I just, I just finished my first semester. Um, 
I took uh, five courses my first semester. Um, so I'd say my biggest challenge is the fact that, um, you know, I, I think I tried to take on too much and I'm stubborn. So um, if, if I can't do something, I am determined to figure it out at the expense of other things. And, um, you know, I, I could spend 24 hours a day studying in the school, you know, and not be a straight A student. So um, I think my biggest challenge was um, accepting the fact that, you know, you, you can't expect to take on the same workload. I mean, it's just, um, you know, if you were doing four classes in middle six, you know, four classes or five classes in another institution, um, at least for your first semester, it's going to be a little challenging. Um, I think I know what it's going to be like now uh, moving forward, and I can kind of adjust accordingly. Um, but I, I had a hard time in one class, and um, uh, it, it took me a while to, um, to you know, come to terms with the fact that I had to withdraw from the class. And, uh, but uh, it saved my other uh, four classes uh, because I was really taken away from those. Uh, and so I'd say that's my biggest challenge. It was, uh, I guess, trying to bite off more than I could chew on the, the first semester. So Keith, was that fifth class an overload? Is there four credit classes? Or? There, well, tough as a weird. It's, it's a, they're one credit per class. And, but they count as four credits if you, you know, transfer it to any other institution. Mm -hmm. so, um, so do people typically take four or five? Yeah, they usually take three or four. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had a seminar um, in, in another class, but I was, I was basically, cause, um, because of my transfer problems that I had talked about, transferring all my credits, um, I have to kind of try to catch up into their prerequisites, and it's hard to get into classes there, especially if they're prerequisites. So I have two years to try to figure out um, you know, all their requirements, um, whereas you know, most have had four. Right, so uh, that was pretty much my problem. I'm, I'm like trying to trying to figure it out. You know, so. I'm um, just sorry. I'm just interested to know that uh, are they looking for a GPA, uh, like was the GPA was yours when you transferred to class? Did they want to know what my GPA uh, was? They do. I believe they do, right? Yes. So do you mind if I ask what <laughs> was your GPA? I had a three point eight six. So yeah, so that that's what I find there is keeping the Yeah, um, yeah. I never took my SATs. Um, it went solely based on um, my application, my three essays, and uh, and <coughs> my work in middle size, basically. Um, but you know, I, I had a uh, I had a great advisor, like I said, and a lot of people uh, that helped me out. So. Um, apart from the yeah. academic challenge that I had my first semester, um, I also had a really hard time trying to figure out where to put my energy apart from my classwork. And so at Middlesex, you could, you could, there is, we have clubs and we have organizations and we have, you know, student government um, that could really, it's a good thing to have on your resume and you get leadership experience and you could do Paul Sullivan and you could do all these amazing, um, you know, organizations and programs that would really help you. When you go to a school that has 500 clubs and organizations, it's, it's really hard to figure out what to put your energy into. And so my first semester, I come in and I'm like, yeah, I was a senator at our BU student government, and it's a 15-hour week commitment. And I was like, oh, no, I can't do that. right? And so here, it was very, you could do a lot of leadership -y things. And you, could put, you know, it was very great for my application to transfer. But <coughs> once, you get, once you figure out, you know, at BU, I wanted to be a biology major. I should probably start focusing my energy on biology-related things. And it took me a little bit of time to figure that out. And so by my second semester, I was like, yeah, I should probably be at a hospital or at a clinic and not doing 15 hours a week in student government senator when I'm not a political science major. So that, apart, that and the academic challenge were my biggest, uh, those were my biggest challenges.